Any style throwback moments that are tough to look at. They're not difficult to look at, but we definitely spend time zooming in wondering, what is that I'm wearing? Hey, we're the Jonas Brothers and Esquire asked us to explain some things. Let's dive in, shall we? What made you decide to come back together as a group in 2019? I feel, you know, slightly responsible. It was you. It, was me. it wasn't me, but I did, I did say, you hey. You initiated. You should, yeah. You initiated. You were like, hey, guys, what's up? I broke the band up and then I brought it all back together. And we wanted to have an album cover with our butts in the frame. We always said, one day, we're gonna break up, come back together, and have our butts in the frame. And there it is. We did it. Dream collaboration as a picture of us with Marshmallow, which we have a collaboration with. I would like to collaborate with John Carew's, the delicious snack that just made a comeback in the last couple of years. Big, big collab. People have been waiting for it. What would it be? Dunk a bros, and you would have little figures of us. Graham cracker figures of us. And you dump them into your favorite, favorite icing. Fries. Could be the vanilla flavor of the chocolate. The options are endless. The profits are endless. Pork roll or Taylor ham? Taylor ham. Pork rolls for Billy. This is a big controversy. Nope, it's Taylor ham. Literally written on the thing, on the log, it says Taylor. I'm gonna let you finish real quick, but Taylor ham is what we all say. But people from South Jersey, because we're from North Jersey, say pork roll. And uh, they are what we would call um, idiots. <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. We love you, South Jersey. But it is called uh, Taylor Ham. It actually says it right on the packaging. Anyone that disagrees, be like calling the New York Yankees the Mets. Sadly, it also says pork roll on the packaging, but we're not going to talk about it. What essentials do you each have on your backstage rider? Backstage, of course, we have Rob's backstage popcorn, which is a popcorn that we started. It's the fastest growing popcorn in America. No, for real, it is. It actually is. Yeah. I'm not, it's not an exaggeration. Or yeah, it's fantastic. fantastic. Oza, which is my uh, fastest spreading red sangria. <laughs> I personally like to have um, a good amount of uh, ants on a log, which is something that we love before, and it's kind of. And I also will have half a banana, and I share that banana with my drummer Jack, and it's like a superstition now. Uh, dark chocolate as well. Lint makes the best, and that's the sea salt dark chocolate. Um, I like to have a, a like a little nibble before the show. Also, water is nice. I, I like a good water. Personally, I'm Thick into water. an essentia water. I can mix it up with a smart alkaline from time to time, but the essentia is the premium one to me. Fiji like really has taken the cake recently for me. Interesting. Oh, departure. You're a box guy? Box water? Yeah, I like box water. Box water's great. It's bio-friendly. Any style throwback moments that are tough to look at. They're not difficult to look at, but we definitely spend time zooming in wondering, what is that I'm wearing? We approached our style kind of like this. You know when you walk into like a retail store and you see the mannequin has all the things on it? Because it's a mannequin. We sort of said, yeah. That'll do, work. Just do that to us. All that. And so a top hat, a scarf, a monocle, wristwatch, and a pocket watch, and a tie, and tucked in boots with a bold and uh, luxurious belt. That was the, the whole aesthetic. When your friend texts you, I'm here, and you walk outside, they're not good. Gosh, Kevin, how did you feel uh, to become a, a viral meme? It was great. Joe started it. I, did I start it? I th I'm, it looks I like Lance Stewart started it. I thought you were the one who posted it first. I might have done some reposting. Uh, it's sad. It's, that photo sucks. It's really funny though. It's a great photo. I'm really disappointed. You're looking for your Uber, aren't you? I'm waiting for my car. Joe knowing he will be reading from the teleprompter most nights. Joe, is this true? I will definitely be utilizing that teleprompter, and so will these guys, because we're doing five albums every night on stage. That is a, a feat in itself. That thing, I'm gonna have it everywhere. I'm gonna look to the left, look to the right. I'm gonna put it on, you know those projector glasses that people can wear? I'm gonna sell those so that people can, deal. I'm gonna, yeah, the, the audience, the entire audience is one big projector. Nick, what is your favorite meme of yourself? I don't know, is there a bunch? Oh, there's a the bunch. There's a few. I mean, I, th I think the, the red dress thing has sort of taken on a life of its own. People come up to me and say that that lyric and the way it was delivered defined their youth in a way. And I've had people say that a few times and it cracks me up because uh, it's defining my adulthood in a sense. Which of your music videos was the hardest to make? I would probably go with your 2000 only because it was our first music video and we didn't know what the hell we were doing. They just and said, it'll look great, trust us. Jump and then now. 
Yeah, climb out of this couch. For real, that's in the video. It says, please explain, and it's a photo of Bounce, uh, one of our hit songs, and, one of, and I don't use that lightly. I think we literally sold enough to get a gold record for this song. It was close to it. I got a, I got a royalty check for this song, and I would never speak about money, but it was for like a joke song. They right, sent a check, and I was like, are you for real? This was meant to be a joke. And they said, it. well, it did stream, and it sold some copies. And I was like, fantastic. We did this because we had a lot of time on our hands uh, during Camp Rock 2. So we, uh, Nick got out the old garage band and we wrote a jam called Bounce. It's shot quite a video. fun. Yeah, shot a video around just Toronto. Early YouTube days, you know? Then you had Vine, then you had Instagram, then you had TikTok. So just think of it like what you'd make on TikTok these days. It means nothing, but it means everything. Any more predictions for the year 3000? I think there's a good amount of people on Mars at this point. Elon did his thing. Somebody did their thing. Got it. And the Giants are in the Super Bowl. The Giants actually won the Super Bowl for the 14th time in a row. Yes. Imagine if this prediction becomes true. Mm -hmm. The Jones Brothers on their, their worldwide AI tour. What are each of your go-to karaoke songs? Mario, You Should Let Me Love You is a classic. The problem with karaoke, though, is that it starts to get late in the night, right? And people are getting tipsy. And you're there trying to take it too seriously. That's been my experience, at least. And so I've sort of just started to say, you know what? No more karaoke. Unless I'm equally as tipsy as everyone else. Mm. Favorite lyric from a song on your new album? It has to be Little Bird. Little in, Bird. In Little Bird. Just um, the whole lyric. Just the whole song as a whole. Uh, but the lyric specifically, uh, flying into someone else's arms. Uh, can you help me with the exact lyric? I don't want to get it right. Um, you don't want to get it right? I want to get it right. I Please know. just keep me in your heart when you fly into someone else's arms. That's the little bird. My favorite lyric is in the song Montana Sky. It says, I've got brothers in their 30s uh, back in Jersey, but your heart is where I'm home. I got a lot of lyrics that I like from this album, but right now I like blue jeans and marijuana because I like both of those things. Have you given your little brother Franklin any advice as he starts his music career? No. No. He does, certainly doesn't need his big brothers chiming in. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's the last thing he wants. Forging his own path, and we're proud of you. Look at him, he doesn't need our help. If you weren't in the music industry, what would you be doing? I would probably like to uh, work with animals and then also work on the sea. So I work as a marine biologist, potentially. I would like to believe that I could have a career as a professional golfer, and there are days when I believe that I could have accomplished that, and days where I want to quit the game. I think I would like to have been an architect. I like designing homes, I think it's really fun. Anything you've learned from your parents since becoming fathers yourselves? We did not give them enough credit. They worked really hard, and they gave us everything. And I think what I've learned from them is, when kids have a dream, do what you can to support that dream. Well said. Well said. Mic drop. And that's all we have. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs>